So, we've made a ton of progress so far. We started in Figma for our low fidelity and mid fidelity mockups. We moved over to Cinema 4D so we could set up using Octane Render, we could set up our actual product design. We went over to After Effects to set up that animation, that JPEG image sequence export, to get that to a JSON file, which we'll use in Webflow. And now, this lesson that we're creating right here is where we're going to, in real time, for real, Take care of our product photography. We're going to set up all of the images that we see in our Figma design that are sort of that mid fidelity level right now, and we're going to create actual product imagery. What is the goal of this particular lesson? This is another one of those lessons that's in between the lessons. What's the goal? Well, the goal is to end up with all of the assets we need in a folder or a zip file so that when we're ready to build our website and Webflow, we have all of our assets right there. So we can just drag them in and get going. It's a great way to be organized. Is it always this way? Do we always have everything ahead of time? No, but we have the convenience now of being able to design and develop all in this sequence. So we're going to do that right now. Sara, welcome. Yes, thank you. I am excited to be here. Okay, so we'll do this in sections. We can start with the hero section and work our way down, or do you have a preference for where we start? Hero section all the way down. Okay, yeah. then it'll be one, two, three, four sections. Actually, we've already done the... Seven. Seven what? Sections. But the assets we're developing are going to be for the hero mm -hmm. section, the fizz, the press the button, keeps your cells are cold. Three. Yes. Four. No, three. Three. Where do you get four? Uh, hero section. Hero section? Press fizz. <laughs> fizz of the press of a button. Press, press, press fizz. <laughs> so we have hero section, press fizz. Keeps your seltzer cold. Keeps your seltzer cold. And then the ultra lightweight, ultraviolet was the yeah. render we did in. Sweet, Africa. yes. So you're set. Three objectives here, three sets of images that we want to export from Cinema 4D and Octane so that we can have them prepped for Webflow. Yeah. Let's get started. Great. Let's do it. Okay, so we're in Figma right now. Of course, we're going to switch over to Cinema 4D. This was the previous render that we did. This was the previous Cinema 4D file. So last time we saved this file, we saved it as carbeakbottle.c4d. We had created sort of a rudimentary animation. So if we scrub through here, we can see everything sort of aligned next to each other. So if we're starting with the hero section, what do we want to do there? In fact, let's go ahead and select all of our bottles assuming that we don't want to use this exact animation. Let's actually clear out those keyframes. Yeah. So let's delete the first keyframe. As a note, if you delete the last keyframe, so let's look again. The first keyframe is when they're sort of randomized over here, and the last keyframe is when they're together. If you were to delete the last keyframe first, notice how it reverts. Since it only has the data in this keyframe, that would remove all of that data that was over here. So we're going to undo, make sure to delete that first keyframe first, and then now that this is exactly what we want it to look like, we can delete the last keyframe. Now there are no animation keyframes on the bottles themselves. So what is the look we want to go for in introducing Carbeek? Do we want to do sort of a... I do love the colors stacking next to each other. So one quick way to test this that we've found works really well for us, just take a quick screenshot yeah. in this area, and then you can just switch over to Figma, and we can just drop in that asset and see sort of what that looks like in real time. So we'll just drag that screenshot right into Figma. We can drag it there. Maybe not the most sophisticated, beautiful thing in the world. What do you think? Yeah, I wonder if we can get a little bit more of an interesting angle. Maybe like looking from the top down from to top the down. bottom. Let's do that. All right, back to Cinema 4D. Top down view. Maybe something angled like this. Mm, I like that. What if we do more? OK, so more of a top. So no, I, no, no, no. More bottles. <laughs> more bottles. OK. All right. So more bottles. Are you thinking a cloner and more of every bottle? Yeah. OK. So let's select all of our Carbeek bottles. Let's actually select a cloner. So we'll create a cloners down here, cloner. And of course, to use all of these in the cloner, we want to make sure all of the children, all of the Carbeek bottles are selected. And we're going to put them in their own group. So let's right click. Let's go to Group Objects. And of course, once we create that null, which we can just call Bottles, we can drag it into the cloner. And by default, the cloner will attempt to reset our coordinates. Let's let it do that this time. So it'll zero out everything. That's fine. And what we can do is a few things. First off, this is going to be a pain if we're dealing with this depth of field. So with our Octane camera tag selected, we can just set the aperture straight out to zero. So it no longer has that depth of field. Now, there's a lot of what Sada requested. There's a ton of Carbeek bottles, maybe spaced out a little much. 
with our cloner selected. Let's, you wanna do a grid view or do you wanna do something linear? What's your preference here? A grid view. You wanna do a grid view? Okay, yeah. so we'll go to mode, grid. This is a three by one by three, so let's decrease this a little bit. Two by two by two. Okay, maybe a little mm -hmm. tight. Maybe 10 by 10 by 10. Of course, the Y value doesn't really matter here because we're not doing anything along height. So a few things, you know, we actually might only want it linear. So it's going to start stacking these things. So what we'd have to do is we have to find that distance between each. Let's try linear so that we could just stack it backwards. Let's turn off the Y value. Let's turn on the Z value, 10. So it'll stack Oh that yeah. Way. What do you think? Looks then, the same as a grid, the but <laughs> so well, well, what was happening with the grid? Let's just let's just do this for demonstration. If we, when we went to the grid a second ago, it started stacking a few of them on top of each other because it's only different. See how they're kind of glitching out. See? So what we'd have to do with the looks like the X, it would have to be what would that be? A hundred? No, ninety because there's nine of them. Nine, ninety. Now, oh, we're getting a little glitch right there. So it would work like that, but it would be just a long sequence. Mm, I see. Whereas yeah. the linear gives us that kind of stack. It really just depends on your vision for what this composition looks like. I like the linear. Do you want more? How many do you want? You want, what would this be? Uh, nine times eight, 72 bottles. That's too much. 72 is too much? Yeah. Okay, so let's do four, four deep. Yeah, that's good. Cinema? 40, 40. Four t f cinema 40, okay. All right, so compositionally, what are you thinking? So we have, let's switch back. Let's look at the Figma real quick. In the Figma, we have sort of the left half dedicated to introducing Carbeek. So compositionally, we have the right half to play with. If we want it angled like this, it might make more sense to sort of resize this and sort of this half and half design. So in Cinema, do we want to set up that composition to look sort yeah. of like that? What do you think? Yeah, I think we can crop it a little bit. Okay. So noticing in both the edit view and in the render view, we're seeing what those crop lines look like. Over here, this is the darker area, as you can see on the top and bottom way of the darker area. In Octane, it's a little offset yeah. from that. So you see this top line and this bottom line, that's gonna be our cropped view in Octane. So let's try to see, we might have to adjust the, adjust the lighting in a moment. But what are you thinking compositionally? Off the edge like this, or maybe more like this? I like where you had it. And maybe the white bottle, so it looks like it gets. It looks like it gets what? Like it continues. Oh, so we could do more of an angle up then. So yeah. it could be a little farther out. Right now it looks like they are floating a little bit, like so, in space. Oh, good point. So we want them floating in space. No. No. I mean, they should stand at something, right? So a plane or a floor. Mm -hmm. We could use a few things for this. Let's use a plane. And we'll drop it. Are you thinking a lighter color for the plane or a darker color? I'm thinking about some like reflections of the colors. Ah. So we could create a new octane material. So let's go to metallic. And this will be a almost direct reflection. So we're just gonna drag that onto the plane right here. And now we'll be able to see a reflection underneath. Ooh, I like them. Yeah. What if the reflection isn't that sharp? So it gets like a little bit. Um... To increase the roughness value. Mm -hmm. and, okay, let's do it. Let's do roughness and we'll increase that float value. So we will, notice how it did get a lot darker. So what happened when we added the plane is it's actually covering the bottom halves of our area lights that we created before. So in fact, if we were to just X out just for a moment so we can leave this camera view, you can see the area lights are being chopped off. So not quite half, but a good amount of the area light. We've lost that brightness, which is okay. We can adjust that later, but just noting why it's a little bit darker right there. And then one more thing, getting this Y height on this plane perfect, Let's get it a little bit closer, just so it's not as much of a lift. So we have a little separation, something like that. And then we'll go back in. What are you thinking in terms of the reflection? Is it a little little strong? So maybe it's a little bit strong, yeah. go into specular, decrease. And so it decreases that reflection. How's that look? It's a little bit dark, actually. It's a little bit dark? Okay, yeah. so let's, let's do that lighting now then. So let's get the shot about where we want it. And let's go into our octane light. So we know we have, we labeled these front and rear before. So with our front tag selected, we can increase the power until we get it a little bit closer. So this is what, 13? That's already brightening that up. Mm. Then in the rear light, it might make sense. We had that reflection before. It's a little low. Let's see what happens if we do 50 centimeters here. So if we can start capturing 
So it's starting, see on the edges right there, we got that nice reflection. What if we mm. do like 80? So now we're uh, capturing. That, yeah, it's starting to look really good. Do you want to go a little bit higher with that? Maybe 100? All right, so how are you feeling about it compositionally right now? Let's try and do a screenshot and see in Figma. Okay, so we'll just do a screenshot. We're just going to roughly estimate from Cinema 4D right now, just like we did a moment ago. We're just going to grab on Mac, we're doing Command Shift 4. You can do it on Mac, Windows, however you want. We're just going to create a selection here. Again, just estimating. And in Figma, let's drag in that screenshot. Of course, another thing we can do in Figma might even be easier. Let's delete this, delete the placeholder. We can actually just copy to our clipboard. So if you have an image file, this is a great thing about Figma, if you have an image file on your clipboard, let's just copy that image file. With an element like this selected in Figma, with this rectangle selected, we can just hit Command V to paste, and Figma will automatically place it. Ooh, that looks good. It's looking pretty good. We can crop this however we want, maybe to the bottom mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. And maybe we want a little wider of a field of view. Yeah. What do you, what do you think here? Yeah, I agree. And perhaps decrease the heading and subheading. Decrease the size of the heading and subheading. Yeah, so yeah. Let's just estimate just there. a little bit. Now, could we be creating yet another duplicate, another frame, so we could experiment with this? Of course, that's another way to go about doing that. We're just using this in real time to quickly iterate on our asset. Of course, this yeah. is a low resolution, just a rough capture. The real one we'll do is going to be a full export from Octane with beautiful, a very, very high sample rate. So it's just an estimate right now. But agreed that a little bit smaller on the heading, we can tweak this a little bit later. But back in Cinema 4, it actually looks a little low saturation still. Yeah, yeah. So Definitely let's go up. back to Cinema 4D, maybe increase that front light even more. We're at, what is that, 13? Let's try 20. It's a little brighter. And oh, then in brighter. terms of pulling the, the sort of zoom back, let's click on our Octane camera. And our focal length is 85 right now. Let's do, that was 85 again. 75, just to widen that field of view, maybe 70. And then just compositionally adjusting a little bit to capture there. We are getting the reflection here. Let's actually pull that area light this way a little bit. In fact, one way that we can make an adjustment in our scene, let's go back into the Octane camera and let's turn options, uncheck, check camera. What that'll let us do is over here, we can just click out and start making changes to our actual scene where we can see everything and just pull this over to see if we're getting better reflections on the edges here. We are indeed doing that. That's looking better. We're getting that yeah. plastic look on the top now. In fact, we might want to lower it a little bit. Yeah, we're getting that nice plastic look across all of these. How do you feel about it? I think the colors looks great now. One thing to note, we could actually drop this one a little more. So we could bring down that light point. And what that would do is it increase the contrast on the top. So we're Ooh, getting mm -hmm. that fill. What do you think about that? Yeah, and then, that looks great. And then we could increase that brightness. We keep increasing. We're saying 15 and then 20. Let's maybe do 30, just eyeballing this right here. I think that's it. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, so we have that rough look. Uh, just to verify in Figma, we can just, again, let's do a quick capture. And again, if we want to replace this in Figma at any time, we can just copy an image and place it right inside just by hitting paste. And that's a little bit better. So if we switch to crop, can try, might even want to go a little bit wider because we're losing, if we go to the bottom right, we're losing that. It depends on the height of the section though, right? So if we made the section height a little bit taller, we could capture more. I think it could be good. And then one note here, does it look a little, does the top look a little dark? I don't think it's too dark. Okay, then we'll leave it, especially since you can sort of see the glowing yeah. these little things over there. So we're in a pretty good spot. This could be the hero image. In fact, let's go back to Cinema 4D and let's configure our render settings. Now, when we configured these earlier, when we did the After Effects, the export for After Effects, we created a JPEG sequence and exported all frames. But because this is a still, we can just go into our settings here. This is our edit render settings. Of course, we wanna switch again our renderer to Octane Renderer. We'll choose to save a file. We wanna save, instead of a TIFF, we wanna save a JPEG. And if this isn't what yours looks like, we're under the save option here. 
We'll switch to JPEG and let's go in here and you can save yours wherever you want. Of course, for us, we have a folder called Carbeek Assets that already has a few of the logos we'll be using as well as the Carbeek logo. So let's save this as hero image. And nice. this is a JPEG. We can of course go in and affect quality. What might make sense for us right now when we render this, let's switch to just a PNG and we can modify in Photoshop so we can play with the file size and get the JPEG optimized for a web export. And then under output, we want to set, of course, our either preset or for us, let's do a custom width. Let's go full 4K here and go 3840 by 2160, which is a 16 by nine aspect ratio at full 4K resolution, UHD resolution. So we only want to render the current frame. It doesn't matter. We don't need all of our frames. There's no animation. So it's not like it would render anything different from frame to frame. So current frame, frame 90 is fine. If we had moved the playhead position, if we just moved to 85, now that'll reflect 85, it doesn't matter. With the output selected, with the resolution we want, and of course with save pointing to the Carbeek Assets folder, let's render. So we can actually close out of render settings if we want, and we'll just render to picture viewer. Now we're gonna do this twice. First to demonstrate, let's move this into our field of view. First to demonstrate, okay, that's not right. What? <laughs> We didn't update the camera position. Okay, we'll do it three times now. <laughs> First time to demonstrate the completely wrong way to do it. Yes. So let's close out. And in fact, let's in Octane go to options, check camera. That should fix that problem. Let's render to picture viewer again. Do you really want to overwrite it? We absolutely, ooh, we absolutely do. Let's say yes. I mean, otherwise, there's some zoom settings in the, on a web that we can zoom in and look at it. <laughs> Is it going to work? Let's see. It says updating. No, it's, it's not. So wrong. We're going to do this four times. Okay, so let's close out a picture viewer. Let's stop. Yes, the external renderer is calculating an image. Do we want to stop it? Yes, we want to stop it because we need to go in here. Let's send this scene and restart the render. So this way we'll make sure everything's updated. Oh, it was working correctly. So it's not Octane's fault at all. In fact, it's our fault. What we did is just to clarify what happened. We had chosen to turn off check camera a moment ago because we wanted to move about the edit view over here. We wanted to move around this view and we had unchecked it. So we wanted to keep the Octane view where it was. When we rechecked right now, it did exactly what it should do. It reset so it showed what the current camera is. We need to switch our Octane camera to center. So we're gonna render again. Again, we're demonstrating this. This is now what our third render. We're going to overwrite the existing one. This will be composed correctly. We can just set the zoom level here. Let's just do 50%. So we're just gonna see what that zoom preview looks like. We're doing this one to demonstrate what our default rendering settings or what our current rendering settings look like when we render a still image. And it looks pretty good. This is a high resolution. In fact, if we wanna to go to 100%, we can, we can start seeing what's going on. It's a little bit of noise, but as it renders, as it gets more samples, of course that noise clears up. Let's zoom in so we can really see what we're talking about with noise. There's a couple of things we can do about noise. So first thing we can do, and we did this a little bit earlier when we adjusted our light, we can increase the number of samples. But the second thing we can do is use hot pixel removal. That's a very specific, very powerful tool. But right now, this one is done. It's a bit noisy. So what can we do to make this look a little better? This is our fourth and hopefully final version of this render for this specific lesson. Let's close out here and we're gonna make a couple changes. In our bottles, we know that under the bottom view, we have this UV emitter that's throwing out light, but no one's gonna see it because it's closed. So let's actually start by going into our UV emitter texture and just turning off that emission. We don't need that emissive light. But the second thing we can do is we can increase the number of samples. So let's go into our Octane settings. Right now it's set to 118 samples. We could set it to something like 1000 or 1500. And more samples means generally less noise, but we can also use hot pixel removal. And what hot pixel, if we go over to camera imager, what hot pixel removal will do is as this number goes down, it'll take white hot pixels, pixels that are rendering that are thrown out as part of the sampling process, and it will reject those. It will take some of those brighter pixels that create these little hot spots on an image, particularly even if it's a high sample image. It'll take some of those bright spots and reduce that visibility. So maybe set this to, let's say 0.75 to experiment with that. But again, the samples themselves should do most of the work here. Let's for the fourth and final time, render. So we'll render to picture viewer and we'll press yes. You know what we forgot to do? What? Depth of field. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna do this for a fifth and final time. So we're gonna close out, we're going to cancel, <laughs> we're gonna cancel the render.
<laughs> and we're gonna set up depth of field. You know what? One compromise here, if we're gonna do this, let's do it. Let's turn back on rendering and let's raise that front light a little bit. I think we need a compromise between the dark color and the lighter color from before. It just looks too dark. It doesn't look what accurate are you referring to the product, to? the top. But I don't think that is too dark. This is why there's compromise. True. We could do, all right, it's minus 28. What if we just did minus 20? What about that as an in-between? It's like a mid-gray color now. Mm. I actually like that you can see the um, press thing, circle. Got it. So what do you think? Is that okay? 20? Yeah, yeah, okay. that works. Compromise. All right, but the real reason we <laughs> did that. that Don't forget depth of field. Depth of, depth of field. So let's do the same thing in Cinema 4D. With our Octane camera selected, let's click our tag actually, and we'll go over. We've set up depth of field before. Let's make it exaggerated while we set focus. Let's set the aperture to something ridiculous for right now. And what that'll let us do is it'll let us take that, if the Octane camera is focused on the null, let's actually call the null focus, let's call it focus null. And what we'll do is we'll take that focus null and we'll uncheck this and we'll just move this over. Which Carbeek bottle do you want the focus to be on? So The pink one or the red one actually. Okay, so let's move this over. Maybe actually the orange one. So noticing that there's actually a track on this from before. So let's actually Ooh. delete these keyframes. So we just have that null single position. You said on the green one? No. Did you actually ever say green? Did you say I, pink? I, you said you like definitely said a color. Pink, red to orange. I say you want orange? Yeah. Okay. So generally, let's use the little focus things right here. These. Just about right. So this is probably a little too detailed for this render, but you know what? <laughs> We've lost it. There it is. So just about there. Let's 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 call it a day. Let's say that's that's close enough for That's great. Okay. And then if we go back to Octane Camera, it should be yes, that one is in focus. Now it depends on what your preference is. Mm. So if you want to make the call on this, in terms of the F stop, if we shot on a 1.8, it would look something like that. It is pretty shallow towards the edges. We could shoot maybe on a 2.8. What's your preference here in terms of depth? Or we can even go higher and just shoot on five. There's very little depth of field here. Did you like it closer to, what's, what's your preference? What are you, where are you right now, 24? This is 28, 2.8. Yeah, one of those three options, mm. 2.8. So yeah, that looks good. let's make the call. Is this the final render? The final. <laughs> Did you, were you looking at, were you looking at the camera? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's, fingers crossed. All right, here we go. And if we look at our picture viewer now, you can see it actually did not ask if we want to overwrite this time. And the reason it didn't ask that is because we had moved, when we deleted that track for the null, we had moved our current frame. So now it's just rendering the 90th frame. Again, it doesn't matter. There's no animation that we're caring about in this render. So this is proceeding nicely. In fact, if we go to 100%, let's look even halfway there. If we go into, let's see, we are actually, <laughs> or <laughs> 20% there. At the 20% mark, it's already looking pretty noiseless. If we go in, we can see a little bit of noise around there. As this render progresses, we can see that that noise will clean up a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll set this back to, let's say 50% so we can see the full view here, and we'll cut back as soon as we're done at 100%. Our final render. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. So <laughs> <laughs> this is maybe the wrong time to tell you the render has completed and we are back to <laughs> filming this session. Cheers. Okay, so we have the hero renders done. Let's move on to, actually let's, let's look at that real quick in Figma. So in fact, you know what? Let's just do what we said. Let's click mid fidelity three, command D to create mid fidelity four. Let's remove this from the first one just so we're staying to that sort of balanced, let's undo that that balanced authentic version of this. Let's turn back a fill and make it black. There we go. So we have our kind of evolution as we are at mid fidelity four. This will be a higher fidelity render. Actually, we could call this high fidelity one. Let's call it higher fidelity so we don't get judged. Higher fidelity one, and we can replace this of course with our new render. So this is huge right now. That's okay, we're going to optimize this in Photoshop in a little bit. This is our huge render. That is not what we expected, but it does look good. The render looks great. Let's scale it down. 
In fact, let's copy, let's delete this, double click. Let's actually just single click on this, paste. Nope, that's not working, <laughs> so undo that. You and need to copy the fill image, not the image itself. Ah. Uh, so you click on the side. This? No, 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 on the side of that tiny image. The side? Yeah, no, no, other Here? side, the other side. Yeah? Yeah, that one. Whoa, so like can you copy that? Copy that. And then delete. And here, paste. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. You can delete the old one. Yep. That is great. Oh, and this, the saturation looks fantastic. It looks great. Look it at this. It looks really, really good. We did good. Mm hmm. Here we go. This is spectacular. We might even want to, in Webflow, what if we bottom left align? Maybe decrease the size between its seltzer from a future and a paragraph. You're saying this? Yeah. Like that? Yeah, something like that looks good. Okay, we're making this happen. This is looking fantastic. Well, that's one section down, two more to go. Let's go into our fizz at the press of a button. Good for carbonating up to 21 drinks. The patented carbonizer magnetically seals to the inside of the lid. Want to freshen your beverage? Simply set your fizz level and press the top button. So let's focus on the top button. Let's go in here. We do not need this many. Let's go in file. Let's go file, save as a save our work. Of course, we called the first one Carbique Bottle. Let's call this Carbique Bottle Hero. And let's create a new version. Let's go File, Save As. And we'll save as Carbique Bottle Fizz. And we can do a few things here. Let's try moving our Octane camera first. Because we did a render, if we start moving around in Cinema 4D right now, it's not going to update. We actually have to send the scene again. It'll restart the engine and render everything in real time. So give it just a moment. Whoever gets it right. I did. No. I did it. It was latency over Zoom. OK. Wow, this actually looks pretty cool. So let's go into our Octane camera while we're composing the scene. Let's actually turn off. Do we want a lot of, do we just want to get rid of the cloner for this one? Yeah, do, two of them. Uh, I think we only need three, right? Uh, yeah, the reference right here, we have three when we created the Figma version. If anyone's curious, we just printed out our Figma version here because we don't have a multi-monitor setup and because we have a very specific capture size on our window. And it I like to, have... to take notes. What's that? I like to take notes. So little known fact, this is actually a copy of the original version mm. in which you took really diligent notes. And I also have a bigger copy of the first copy. It was printed without remembering to scale down that print and fit it in the print, what is that called? The print media, 8.5 mm. by 11. Yeah. So on this reference, we have three. So let's try to set up something sort of like that here. Let's delete all but three. Which, which three colors should we keep? Or should we do three of the same color? Let's do the pink, red, and orange. OK, so we'll take all three of these. We'll cut those to our clipboard. In fact, we can just, let's actually just delete the bottles with those three colors on our clipboard already. Let's just paste. Again, this is our orange, our red, and of course the pink. Magenta. Magenta. Well, it's a little bit more of a. Yeah, pink. it's not really. You scroll down here, it says pink. Mm. And if you click into. Actually, it looks more pink. Yeah, it's, it's a pink. little bit magenta. Just though. to clarify, though, it's pink. Oh, it's pink. So we have our three bottles uh, left, the three, six, seven, and eight, this Carbique set. Let's zero out the exposition so we can center it over here. And let's compose our shot. We might not want this bottom reflection in the shot. In fact, we might only want to focus on the tops themselves. So as much as we have three beautiful colors here, it might make sense to actually replace each of those. Let's create a new custom, or maybe start with the black version and drag this onto the middle so that we can focus less on this object. In fact, we can probably drop that roughness to, let's say, much lower value so that we're really focusing on the tops here. It's looking pretty nice. Do you want an angle like that, or are you assuming? Are we focusing on one or all the three? Because we have all the three here. Yeah, we have all three here. We could just and do a top here. Or what's your, what are you thinking? Maybe I have them a little bit closer okay. and not cropped at the edges. OK, so let's do minus, let's say minus eight. And then this one would be minus. Wait, the third one. That would be eight. What's your thought there? That looks actually really good. Might be intersecting, honestly. I mean, but that's close. Do you want to? Not close enough. Uh, you want nine or is, is eight okay? Let's do minus nine. All right, there we go. Yeah, that looks way better. Okay, so do yeah. you want an absolute top view here? 
Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that. Let's actually select our Octane camera. Let's zero out the X position, zero out the mm. Z position, make this negative 90, and then we're just zeroing this out again. We already have, we're optically pretty close to it, so we're just taking these values, which this one is negative 0.924 degrees, we're just zeroing that out so that we get really accurate here. So now we're getting this top-down view of everything. Maybe the roughness on the black could be increased if we want a little increased visibility on the sides there. So we could do that, see what that would look like. So we're giving depth to the bottle here. We're really getting iPod click wheel vibes here. Yeah. Do you want one of the area lights to cast a little bit of a reflection there? I was just thinking about that, actually. Okay, yes. so let's take our options, uncheck, check camera, so we can move our Octane camera around. And now we can just grab this light, and we can mess with the height here. Oh, we're getting that. We're starting to get that cast. Might even create a larger light that goes up more. We're really getting that sort of beautiful glass. You know, we could even do a little rotation here. So we're now ca catching that right there along the edges. Mm -hmm. Maybe even. No, too much. Too much? Hmm. That looks way better. Eight. Four, let's, let's pick a number that looks good here. Maybe somewhere between uh, six. Do we want in any way to depress any of the buttons or do we want all three of the buttons to stay where they are? This really looks like an iPod click wheel. I mean, I still like it though. Um, what would happen when you click it though? Okay, let's see what happens. So we're gonna use our move tool and we'll depress one button. Immediately obvious from the top. So what if we continue to drop the button and then if that's, you know, maybe take out whatever this thing is, and maybe it like oh. comes towards the camera. What do you think? What is that? It's a part of the top. Oh. Just kind of, it's kind of uh, approaching the camera. I really don't like that. <laughs> so it's just like kind of a abstract? Well, you know, I'm wrong. But let's not do that. Okay, undo. How many times? Right. There. Okay, what do you think? Is this the composition? I think this looks good. I'm missing some glow though. Once you said glow, it became an interesting kind of challenge if we want to create, let's close these, octane light front, and actually let's go to the tag and drop the power a little bit. What if we make it a challenge to have these glow a little more? Ooh. What do you think? Mm-hmm, maybe the middle one. Over to post, some glare. It's like extra charged. <laughs> extra charged. Oh, Ooh, exactly. Yeah. So it's it might be a little intense. A little bit intense. Something like that? I think we can do more. You want more glow? Mm. Okay. We're also going to, uh, let's just set temporarily, let's set our focal length to something like 170. And then, oh, we moved this shot. We've been moving around the Octane camera. That's okay. We can reset Command-Shift-Z a few times until it resets that field of view for us. There we are, back to where we started. Let's click to reset, resend it to Octane, and let's change the field of view to 170. And now, should be a little bit closer. It might not pick that up because we have to go to Options, Check Camera, and now you should be able to see this a little bit closer as soon as we send it one more time. There we go. So you're saying a little more than this? Mm. So there's a couple things here. What the difference is between glare and of course the bloom, let's actually turn off the glare blur. It's glare controls things like this. So you mm, actually see- I, I want more glare. You want, you want more glare? Mm, not that much, but like more. Like that? No. Uh, you, so this. there's a few things here. So there's the glare angle, which let's just do this. Mm. That is beautiful though. It absolutely is. The number of rays, the ray amount here. So that's four, five, you can increase or decrease that. Mm. That's single point. That so if you wanted, you could just do a, a Let's just do one, and then we could say the glare angle. Let's just make it let's zero it out, so you'd have just these vertical kind of uh, looks right here. Could increase that to two, three, so we have that symmetry. Of course, we can make it a little more organic and just change that glare angle. And we control glare blur, which is how we can control each of those. So this gives us a very sharp glare. This is a very blurred glare. I think it's a little bit strong, um, yeah and then add a tiny bit of blur. And I think we should, that looks great. Yeah. 
right there? Mm hmm Okay. So let's do that. Let's switch our octane camera back to 70. Do we need depth of field on this example? Actually, no. We could, just to make it, just take it to an extreme, what happens if our depth of field is brought way up? Can't really see much. In fact, it looks a little confusing. So agreed, let's set the aperture to zero. And let's render. We might not need as many samples for this example. Let's just do, let's say 500 samples. Uh, let's use, in terms of resolution, what's your preference here? This will not be a full hero image. So we could choose maybe a lighter resolution. Let's go to render settings. Of course, we can get there with our shortcut as well. Uh, we're going to call this fizz image. We'll optimize again later in Photoshop. Let's go to our output. It's exactly what we wanted before, but let's change some of our frame size options. We don't need that same resolution. So let's say the width could be something like 2800. And let's say the height really only needs to be, we need to look at the aspect ratio. Let's try 1000. That should be right. That clamps us. That looks pretty good. So why do you want a small size image? A smaller size image. Oh, in the, the aspect ratio, the sizing. So no. there was just wasted space before. So no. even if we if we had gone back, let's go back to 3840 by 2160. There was some wasted. If you look over on the left side here, there's just that wasted extra space, and this gives us more control over adding margin on the outsides if we really want to bring that space mm. back. So just adapting that aspect ratio to more accurately fit the content inside. Uh, so that was 2,000, or what is that? 2,800 by one. So even at a two, on a 2x display, that 2800 gives us that flexibility of 1,400 pixels width in CSS, in HTML. So we have a ton of room to play with that. So let's keep that at 2800 by 1,000. Unless there's anything else, I think we can render this as well. Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's render to picture viewer. And it's rendering. You're absolutely right about the glare, by the way. It looks fantastic. Let's see that at 100%. Now, can you see that on your display? I can. I can. What is that? A, is that a 16-inch MacBook Pro? Pro? Yeah. Nice. Render complete. Awesome. OK. So we have two of our three assets. We need one more, which of course is our keeps your seltzer cold. Product design note. Yeah. We never designed the base station. Oh, we did not. Well, let's do it. Let's do the, the base station design. Because actually in Figma right now, we have it. It's just this kind of circle right here. We just drew a circle. So we can design it however we want. Do we want the cord? No. OK, so in Cinema 4D, let's go out of our Octane camera. Because we did a render, we know this by now. Let's actually save the Fizz version. Let's save that project. And let's actually go back to the version that we use, the revised version of what we'll end up seeing in our next section, the one we created the Lottie animation. And that way we can keep the angle contiguous between the base station and the keep your seltzer cold section, and of course the ultra lightweight ultraviolet section. We want those to basically have the same angle, the same field of view. So let's use that one as a reference. Carbeak bottle isolated. That's the project right there. So let's of course send this to render so we can see what's going on. And once that loads up, I actually just make a few changes here. Let's first file save project as. Carbeak bottle base station. And all we have to do, first off, we do not need that render inside. We don't need that color. So let's, of course, go back to when this lid was closed. Let's get rid of, let's go into the bottle. Let's get rid of the UV emitter because we don't need it. And of course, let's get rid of that track where the top actually moves. Let's delete frame 90 and just delete frame zero as well. So it's stationary. And what we can do to design this is we can move up the carby bottle. Again, we want that same angle, that same field of view. So let's not touch the camera. Let's just move the bottle up. And we can optimize this later. But for right now, let's say, let's change our render settings real quick so we can compose this shot a bit better. It was 1280 by 1280. Let's actually set this to 2800 by 1,000. That was the same aspect ratio we used before. That's OK. So let's close that out. Let's actually change this bottle to, what do you think, black, silver? Maybe black to distract or not distract from the base station. So it's a yeah. black version here. That looks pretty good. Maybe we need a little bit of space left under here. Let's just do 1,500. Widen our aspect ratio. And let's create our base station. We could actually just duplicate the bottom. So it's Command-Drag. 
or let's undo that. Let's create a copy and paste. Copy and paste. And the reason sometimes it's quicker to do a copy and paste is it pastes outside of that object. So now this is its own thing. We can say this is charging, or we can call this base station. What does it say here? It says base station. That's correct. OK. Base station. And let's move it down so we can demonstrate what that base station looks like. Already, we're getting some pretty accurate, some pretty good reflections. Maybe the brightness is a little high on both of these. Let's decrease that rear light so we're not getting that same cast. And the front one, the front octane light, let's decrease that a little bit too. We're getting a lot of shine right there. Let's decrease down to, let's say, one. How far away do you think the base station should be? And should the base station be exactly the same size, or should it be mm -hmm. wider? Good question. Um, Looks a little you know, narrow. We, we need to like zoom in a little bit for the product image. Um, so agreed. However, we kept it contiguous, at least in terms of alignment and Figma. We could always change that. But the size of each of these was the same from top to bottom. We could zoom in. We could absolutely zoom in. You're right. But if we do that, we want to keep the aspect ratio, or we want to keep all of that the same. We could just temporarily or even permanently go in and change the focal length. Let's say 120. And what are you thinking in terms of the base station itself? Do you want it to be that same type of silver color? Do we want it to maybe actually adopt that black color? Or or a modified version of that black color that has something, let's copy and paste the, let's re rename to base station. Let's apply that, drag it right over the old texture, and then go in and actually see if we can maybe decrease the roughness a little bit. So we get the increased kind of polished black look. No, I think it was better before. The silver one? Yeah. So we'll delete this base station. We'll go back to, what was it, top and bottom, this one right here? Yeah. And for the size, what's your thought here? Do we want to scale it up a little bit, or is it fine the way it is? Do we want to flatten it? Do we want to so? Yeah, let's flatten it. So here it is a little more narrow. Yeah. Do you want to uh, scale it up in other dimensions as well? No. So keep it exactly where it is. Yes. One thing that we did, we created a blue ring before. Do you want a blue ring? Mm. Or hang on. Do you want the blue ring to glow? Yeah. OK, we're going to do that. All right, all right, all right. This is going to be pretty cool. OK, so let's create our blue ring. We actually had a ring created inside the Carbeek bottle from the top, perhaps in the cylinder, in the top button holder. No, it was the carbonator. There it is, blue ring. Copy and paste. Let's just collapse all of that so we have this blue ring. And we can't see it, so we're actually going to zero out its position. And then we'll move it up right here, just so it's just resting on the top of the base station. There we go. So we have this visible blue ring. For us, let's create a new material. Let's go to Materials, Octane Diffuse Material, so we can make a sort of glow. Let's replace the default or this existing blue ring. Let's call this the base station ring. And we can turn on Octane Diffuse. What do we want? Do we want a textured emission? Do we want a Ooh, black body emission? Do you want a specific color? We could choose any 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 color in the world. Let's do, what else? What did we have on the top? We had pink, red, and orange. Not in that order, but um, let's do pink. Let's do pink. Texture emission. We'll click into the white box here. It's right, right now very, let's in fact, let's go into post. Let's decrease kind of our bloom power, our glare power. And it's still pretty bright. We can drop our power here just to get it a little more reasonable. So we'll see some of that glow. That looks OK. And then. In texture, let's go into C4D Octane. And of course, we'll choose RGB Spectrum. These are all listed in alphabetical order, but let's choose RGB Spectrum. And when we do, it's bright white. That's OK. Let's click the white color. And then we can go in here and click in this box and just choose any color. So pink, we can make pink happen. Got that beautiful pink color. Go back to emission. Let's click in and decrease that power to make it a little more reasonable. So we're getting that. Glow. It might be a little intense. It's a little bit bright, but the glow outside is stunning. So, so what if we decrease the power? Let's go to surface brightness so we have more control over this. Let's get the power somewhat reasonable here, and let's increase the glare power. We're just really not seeing much here. What if we turn off glare and turn up bloom?
We're still going to get clipped off, so we might want to move this and Photoshop it later. What do you think about this down here? It's a little bit bright it's still. Bit bright. Yeah. Or is it the texture? So mm. one one Good note question. here is we could apply a different texture to the top of the base station. So one way to do this, if we click out of Octane Camera, and yeah, so if it if it catches that reflection, it's looking too bright. Ooh, but from here, yeah. it's looking too bright. So what we, what we could do, one way to do this, and there's a million ways to do this, but let's select our base station. Let's go in, and right now we're editing. This is model mode. We could switch to polygons. And when we switch into polygons, now we can select anything we want. One way to do this is we could just choose our selection tool here. This is our live selection. Just click and drag to select all of these. And of course, we can apply a texture to this. So let's go to materials. Let's do a octane, let's say a diffuse material, and drag that right onto that selection. So it'll now just apply to that top selection only. So the base station is now textured. I like that. I think that is looking really good. Yeah, and that's even before we do much with this diffuse material. Right now, it's probably kind of a gray color. So let's go in and change that to diffuse. Let's go to a darker gray. So the base station on the top is now a darker gray color. Let's switch this back to model mode. And so now, if we click Octane Camera, switch our view back, we now have that beautiful, maybe that's a little too dark on the base station, but we're getting there. What do you think? It's a little bit dark. So you want to go a little brighter with this? Mm -hmm. I like them. We could even have, you could add another emission <laughs> to the base station itself, which can, there we go. So right now. It's a, it's a little bit, it's a little bit bright. So you want to increase the power? No. <laughs> All right, undo. Let's turn off. Let's get rid of that. Go back to emission, clear, back to diffuse. We're getting that value right now. We could go back in to our settings to post and let's decrease the bloom power a little bit. And we're getting that pink ring. Maybe it's maybe it's better with that pink, pink glow more intense. How are you feeling about the bloom power versus the glare? So if we increase the glare power, getting that kind of look, mm, or we yeah. do a combination, what do you think? I mean, it looks awesome. One thing to note here is that we had done that zoom earlier where we brought it in. Now we're clipping at the bottom. We could just go back True. into that Octane camera and switch back. What was it 70 before? We can zoom in, but like place the bottle more on the top so uh, that yeah. the cap is in the focus. Yeah, we could do Carbique bottle two, base station. Let's make, let's actually put the base station ring inside the, the base, base station. The base station, yeah. Right. So let's go base station, Carbique bottle, and let's move up. And to your point, we can, whoa, what did we lose? We lost something there. What's I did floating? Not see. Ooh. What is that? Oh, that's a cap. That's a top. How is that disc? What's this disc doing? I oh, it's the water. It's the water. It's the rippling water. It's the it's the seltzer water. It's the seltzer water. We're going to delete the seltzer water for right now. But if we were to move, we'd see this little floating, perfectly rippling water effect there. But let's delete Ooh, that. Ooh, that's nice. It is not relevant. It has been de What is that? Just FYI. We left the seltzer water bubbles, so as we're rendering, there are floating seltzer water bubbles. All right, so that's sphere, sphere one, sphere two. Okay, delete all those. Now we're looking good. Let's grab the base station, the car beat bottle. Let's move those next to each other so it's easier to select. Whoop, let's do both of them. And there we are. So you want to push back in, let's say 100. Mm -hmm. We could make sure in Photoshop that, or whatever tool we're using to finish this, that we apply sort of a black gradient along the edges of this so that we're not, if it is clipping, it's not gonna yep. be a harsh edge when we import into Webflow. How are you feeling about this? I love the glare. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Let's go into our render settings. Now, this was from our old project, so we do have to make a couple changes here. We do have to go for our output. Instead of all frames, let's do current frame, and under save, let's change it to PNG. Again, we'll finish this later. And we'll call this base station. And of course, when we're ready, we can close out, and we can render. In fact, before we do that, let's go in and change our samples. Let's go back down to 500 for this one, and let's render. But that's our final render. Now, how do we get this ready for import into Webflow? How do we get these things optimized? Well, we can use a tool like 
Photoshop or Figma or Affinity. We can use any tool we want to finish. We'll use Adobe Photoshop. And here in Photoshop, we'll actually drop, let's say, three of these in. Let's get start with the base station. And we'll load this up. That looks pretty good. We'll do what we said before. Let's add a new layer. And let's use the gradient tool here. And we'll choose to go from, of course, this primary color to transparent. And make sure this is set to black. It is set to black, the foreground color. And we'll just click and drag from the edge here. And Shift, hold on, Shift to lock it. If we let go of Shift, we can do any angle. Shift to lock it. And we'll just make sure the edge is blacked out. And we'll do the same thing on the bottom. You could do this radially as well if you'd like. And then we'll do one more. Shift, and we'll hold down and do the same on the sides. If we actually turn off the visibility here, we can see we've created this almost vignette around the entire image. That's going to prevent any clipping if this glare did indeed go beyond the edge. So is that really practical? Well, if you go into the background and we go Command L to mess with our levels, you can actually see, uh, other way, if we actually pull up, we see this glare actually does indeed go to the edge. But if we have that kind of vignette turned on, we do the same thing. We go to Levels, and we bring that up. We can see it's nicely, that vignette holds it within the edge. Of course, we're not going to do that. But because a lot of people are on 10-bit displays, because this is going to be displayed at different brightness levels, it's always a good idea to make sure the edges of an image that we don't use transparency on are even and matched. So let's do that. We could, of course, merge our layers if we want. Doesn't matter, because we're going to go in File, Export. We're going to do Export As. Or we could use Save for Web, the legacy version there. Let's use Export As. And we'll get a nice preview of what this looks like. Of course, this lets us control a lot of the information here. What we're really looking for, though, is the file size. Let's switch to JPEG. And the goal here is to export the maximum quality in terms of the look with the minimum file size. We could actually see, depending on what you're viewing this on, we can see actually a little bit of kind of a janky, crusty look around the edges here. So what we might want to do is switch our JPEG quality from good. Let's try very good to see if it reduces that. That's OK. That's really just OK. Let's try excellent. That's looking a uh, Sana is requesting remote control of your screen. Mm -hmm. OK, approve. Yeah. It's all yours. OK, so let's click Export. OK. And we're calling it Base Station 0063. That was the frame that was selected on Export. But that's not what we're calling that's it, not what right? We're calling it. Okay. We can call it anything you want. Base Station Car. B. Perfect. There's a space at the end of that. OK, that's one down. Let's do two more. Let's go in reverse order. The next one would be the, the Fizz image. Let's open that in Photoshop. We have a three up view right here. Same thing. Right now, it doesn't look like we can always go Command L, check levels, and make sure. Oh, he's grabbing from the wrong side there. Oh, we do have glare towards the edge. So same vignette technique there. This time, because we might want some space on the top and bottom, let's go to Create a New Layer. And let's use that same vignette technique. Shift, drag, shift, drag. Or if it makes more sense for visibility so you can see what's going on, do that. We just turned off the visibility on the base layer. And now we have this vignette on all four sides. Turn it back like that. Command L. Pull it from the correct side this time. And now we can see we're more or less, someone would have to have their brightness set extremely high for this to be visible. We're a lot better here, though. Cancel. And of course, we can combine our layers if we want. We don't have to because we're going to go to File. Are you still in control of the screen? No. No. OK. So File, <laughs> Export. We'll do uh, Export. I gave it to Greamer. Greamer? It's an issue because you <laughs> he turned off the brightness so bright, so you can't really see it. We'll go to Export As, same thing as before. The goal here is to make sure we're getting the highest qualities po possible. So if you look at the sort of gradient here, you could see a ton of, in fact, if you go in right there, you can see that kind of crust right around the edge there. We're seeing so much visibility in these different stops of the gradient or these different points in the gradient. Not fantastic. Let's go to Very Good. It's better. It's still a little crusty around here. Let's that, that actually might be in the render. Let's go to Excellent. It is in the render, so we are seeing a little bit of, that's OK. Seeing a little bit. We could have done, a, for a little higher samples, we did 500 samples. We could have gone for higher samples. But this is OK. We're extremely close right now. What we'll see at 100% is that. And that looks pretty good. That's excellent. And that's 166K. It's a lot more manageable than the original, which was, what, 2.5 megabytes. So 
excellent reduction. Let's go to export. Is there a reason why you want to reduce the file size? Yeah, right now it's what, 10.6, 2.5, we're almost 15 megabytes in terms of uh, payload, in terms of download size. By reducing this, not only will it load faster, but it's going to be accessible to more people that might not have the fastest internet connections in the world. And it's more performant. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. You got it. So this is, what are we calling this one? Fizz button Carbeek, just following your naming scheme here. Mm -hmm. OK, and then finally, we have the hero image, which will load into Photoshop. This is our final image, and this looks fantastic. Remember, this is a larger, if we go to image size, we can see it's a larger, it's 3840 by 2160, a full 4K render here. So a couple things. This is going to be clipped on the edges, so we don't have to vignette. But one thing we could do here to treat this, just as we would a raw photo that comes out of a camera, we could use the camera raw tool. So let's go to filter. And we can go to Camera Raw Filter or, of course, Shift-Command-A. And from there, let's hit Get Started. Let's resize this. From there, we can do things like adjust the color temperature. Let's keep that out to zero. We can adjust the tint. If we find that it's tinted a little far towards the green, we tint it towards purple a little bit. We can also play with the exposure. So if we want to increase or even decrease the exposure, we can do that right here. A lot of our just basic post we can do if we want to decrease the contrast. One thing we might want to do is up the saturation a little bit more just to get that vibrance. Speaking of vibrance, we could update our vibrance here as well. So we can play with this to get it exactly where we want. Now, we have a lot of control. So if we want to go down, we could look at Color Mixer. And we could say, hey, you know what? All of these colors are looking good, but the red is looking too saturated. We could always just go in and say, take our saturation for the reds and just drop that. So we're isolating that red color. Or maybe we want the red a little more saturated. That looks pretty good. Same thing with the pink. What's the perfect pink color? And we can take our magentas and increase that. Or maybe we want to desaturate our pink for a little bit less of a bold color, or we could just leave it exactly where it is. So we have a lot of options there. Let's hit OK. And from here, let's go and file, export, and of course, export as. And let's go into 100% so we can see what's going on. In fact, let's go a little farther than 100% so we can see what kind of quality we're getting, especially in this reflection. Right now, 218 kilobytes, great for a hero image. Let's maybe try. Very good, and see what that looks like here. That's looking a lot better. See how it looks around some of these intersection points. A little bit of banding right there. Maybe excellent. It's much larger file yeah. size. Maybe not that many, maybe not that much in terms of returns. So maybe back to very good. That looks pretty good. So 434.9 kilobytes export. We can call this Hero Image Carbeek. And just like that, we have three assets that we styled, rendered in Cinema 4D and Octane. We optimized in Photoshop, so they're ready. They're part of our assets that we can import directly into Webflow. And from here, we can build a full production-ready site for Carbeek. It's Seltzer. From the future. But that's exporting our assets. Up next, we'll be jumping right into Webflow to build our full production-ready site.